Today is uh, all about self-advocacy and nothing about us without us. Um, and actually, Shao and myself, we are actually working on a bill for next year that would better help get self-advocate representation in the work, work groups and committees. And so we're actually working on the language for so that. Um, right now with uh, Representative Pollock's office. And so that's just something I wanted to share that we're working on. And that's something really important. And thank you, sir, that there is uh, disability representation in, in discussions that affect our everyday lives. And so, oh, Welcome County is here. Welcome, uh, Beverly from Welcome County. So it looks like we have a lot of counties represented here. And that is really awesome. And the, and uh, I'm, uh, we're going to have a lot of awesome speakers today who will talk about the uh, how we do our self advocacy work. So, our first speaker today is Alec Motler. Alex is our policy director for SAIL, and he is really awesome. Take it away, Alex. Thank you. Hello. My name is Alex Modler. I am the policy coordinator for self-advocates and leadership, SAIL. SAIL is a coalition of people with developmental disabilities working to influence and get bills through the legislature. Each year, we put together our priorities for the legislative session and try to get at least one bill through the process. Our theme is nothing about us without us and we push legislation that keeps people with disabilities central to disability policy. We are against institutions and tirelessly work to ensure that there are legitimate community-based options. We believe that everyone should be able to work at competitive jobs and should be able to support themselves form their wages. I am employed as sales policy coordinator and have spoken to legislators on sales behalf. Our priorities include eliminating sub-minimum wage, shutting down institutions, investing in community supports, and ensuring that parents with disabilities have the supports they need to raise a family. My two roles at SAIL are policy and membership. On the policy front, I put together one-pagers for SAIL which summarizes our position on key issues and help host advocacy days during session. Typically, advocacy days would include rallies at the Capitol. However, this year has forced us to operate remotely. These days highlight key issues surrounding our community. While not every topic in the advocacy days are TV specific, SAIL takes a position on how people with disabilities are affected by the purpose legislation. For example, we have advocated that police force should not be used as a way to force answers on people with disabilities. As a coalition, we want to improve our access to community services and supports. These supports are key to putting people with disabilities in community settings rather than institutions. Furthermore, we need to have a strong unified voice to speak to our issues. Our success depends on what our members want from us. We only put things in our agenda if a vast majority of our active members are present. We meet on the second Tuesday of every month from 1 to 4, so it is not a huge commitment to join. At our meetings, we discuss legislative priorities, impacts on the developmental disabilities community, and elect our own officers. Run by the disability community, we only prioritize what we want to get done in the legislature. This control enables us to tell legislators what we, as people with disabilities, want our policymakers to focus on. Join SAIL and have a say in our community. We depend on you to voice your concerns in order to be a strong staff for you. We've been zooming through this pandemic. Your voice is our call. Come to our April 13th 
2021 meeting, second Tuesday of April, and see what we are all about. Go to salecoalition.org, click on meetings, this will open a Zoom window where you can see other members and participate in discussions. Thank you, Alex. That was great. Uh, just a reminder, so if uh, if you're having trouble hearing, just remember to go to the little globe at your toolbox and pick the preferred language that you would like to have. Also, we've also posted in the chat, uh, and uh, if Anthony is willing to post it again, it's our virtual background, which um, kind of shows an example of self-advocacy. Uh, a person with a disability is saying they don't want to go to an institution and uh, the, the, God, uh, the other person is saying they do. And uh, the question is, who do I listen to? So, uh, here it goes, it just got posted again in the chat. Thank you for that, Anthony. All right. Yep. So our next present, our next uh, presenter is the epic Sean Latham. Take it away, Sean. Thank you. Thank you, I have another. Oh, I'm going to use that. Good morning, everyone, and happy advocacy day. My name is Sean Latham. You may know me as a member of SAIL, which I still am and proud to be. But today I'm talking to you about another organization called Allies in Advocacy as I am their current director. Allies in Advocacy, or Allies for short, is a relatively new self-advocacy organization fighting for the civil and equal rights of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We began Allies more as a think tank self-advocacy group in 2012, as members from different youth and adult advocacy groups came together to help with a presentation about Washington State and disability services at the time. Allies followed that up by creating a human rights document that includes people with disabilities. That document is called a Proclamation for the Dignity and Rights of All Human Beings. It can be found on the Allies and Advocacy website. And after I'm done, I will put the exact link in the chat. But for those who can't access the chat, just go to alliesandadvocacy.com. The proclamation that we wrote over two years states a few key items. If you agree with these statements, please raise your hand, your digital hand, stand up or show your approval in any way. First, everyone, including those with disabilities, deserves real choices in their life and deserve to be the one making those choices. If you agree with that, please raise your hand. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Similarly, okay. we have the right to try things. Sometimes we will succeed and other times we will not, but we have the right to try no matter what. If you agree with that, please raise your hand. We have the right to live free from abuse, neglect, or exploitation. If you agree with that, please raise your hand. And finally, one of the points in the proclamation is to pass on our knowledge about our experiences to help the younger generation. If you agree with that, please raise your hand. Well. Thanks everyone. So beginning in 2017, Allies looked at modifying this think tank group to create a non-profit organization. 
This new nonprofit will do three key things. Work with our self-advocacy partners to build up the self-advocacy movement. Number two, allies will work with state disability partners and our government to help make sure laws that affect people with intellectual and developmental disabilities are implemented correctly. Because just because we all advocate to pass legislation doesn't mean our job is done. We need to make sure these laws are done correctly and are their impacts are fair for everyone. Third, Allies is currently serving as a fourth developmental disability network partner, which is an unofficial self-advocacy leg. The other three partners, being our state BD Council, Disability Rights Washington, and our state university center for excellence in developmental disabilities. Each of us are tasked to work on new programs and projects that will help those with intellectual and developmental disabilities lead successful lives. We hope someday to get our national leaders to modify the federal DB Act, to officially recognize self-advocate, should be an equal partner in this movement, since it's primarily dealing with our lives directly. I hope this will be something you want to work and advocate with us on. I want to finish my speech by telling you about allies priorities for this year. We are working to improve community services and community residential opportunities by advocating to lawmakers, working with our disability partners, and creating public awareness that we need to serve people not in large congregate settings, but in the community. We will also be advocating with our partners to stop any budget cuts to DB services due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We feel, like many here I'm sure, that DD services are already underfunded, so we do not need any more cuts. Third, we want to assist self-advocates to help them get on more state boards and committees, because we feel like the more our leaders hear from self-advocates, the more inclusion there will be in our communities. Fourth, we want to make sure personal care services are set up to work for all people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, meaning we want first, to yeah. high quality providers in the field that work well with us when they come into our homes or residential settings. And last but not least, we want to assist in removing any technology barriers in our state so that we all have full access to our communities. I hope you will support allies this year as we work on these priorities, as well as others. And please remember the phrase I love to say when I end, nothing about us without us. And Thank people you. first too. Thank you, Sean. That was great. Oh, it's absolutely a wonderful organization. All right. Now we're going to go on to our next speaker, uh, the awesome Larry Hill. Take it away, Larry. Hello, guys. Hope everybody's having a fantastic St. Patrick's Day today. Another day yet again. Oh, wow. I don't even know where I can begin. You know, it felt like it was just yesterday that we were all in Olympia, Washington, having a good time. You know, before this pandemic hit, you know, we were all um, at advocacy days enjoying ourselves, having our voices heard and speaking around the ones that we, that we care for dearly. Not only that, everybody had an opportunity to talk to their legislators. Um, there are these times, you know, it's, I know things have been rough, but, you know, around here, we're still family, you know, we're still a team together. So, um, but for me, you know, I am the uh, historian for People First of Washington, and I look back at a lot of things and... Uh, I've been your guys' photographer for a while. I've been doing a lot of fun activities. I posted a few bingo events and done a lot of fun things, you know, try to get some boost and energy up. Uh, but uh, but today is, is still another day, and you know, you know, time has been flying quick. Um, for me, you know, it's like, what can I say? It's all about. Oh wait, hold on a sec, guys. Let me breathe for a minute. You know, for all of us, the. Um, our advocacy, you know, advocacy is about, you know, making some changes and doing things for yourself. 
you know, helping one another out with things, you know, supporting each other through times, you know, and being there for each other, even through thick and thin, you know, when times are down, you don't want to give yourself up on things. And, you know, you know, we've been through so much together, you know, I think it always feels good when we all come together and enjoy company with one another. We, we have good laughs, we smiles, we do a lot of things together. But around here, you know, when it comes when it comes to advocacy, you know, you know, we are the people. We have a voice that that needs that can be heard. You know, we can speak on things. You know, you know, we we things that come from the heart is, is what counts when it comes to you know being about advocacy and being around other people and you know it's, you know expressing the joy in the heart and having passion for things you do. You know, there's a lot of things everybody can do if you put your heart into it. I say during these times, you do not want to give up on things, you know, throughout whatever you do, guys. So no matter what, no matter what, you know, this pandemic has taken some joy away from, from us, but don't never let it take away your dignity, guys. If you guys are hearing me clear on this one, don't hesitate to raise your hand, you know, it's uh, because, you know, a lot of things, are, you know, a lot of things are hard, but, you know, still, you know, you know, stay strong for one another, you know, be there and encourage each other. You know, as I was sitting doing, uh, excuse me, as I was in Olympia last year, I did the Olympia Insider. And as I did a lot of stories with a lot of people with disabilities, you know, I was asking them questions and, you know, the, the stories that everybody had, you know, they were really touching and, you know, it was it was really, really serious, you know, from what they wanted to speak about and to have their voice heard. And then one of the, one of the most important things to know, you know, is that everybody counts and everybody's always important. So don't, so don't always forget that, guys. I'm just gonna say like it is, you know, continue to be yourself throughout everything. You know, things are taking, you know, time's going quick. You know, we miss being around the ones we, we love dearly. And, you know, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it is what it is. Excuse me, guys. I'm, you have to excuse me, I'm a little nervous today, guys. It's just been one of those, one of those, one of those hard weeks, but not trying to take up too much of you guys this time or anything like that, but but for me, um, you know, you know, we're we're still we're still here, guys. We're gonna keep staying strong. We're gonna move all the way, and this story will continue, and we'll make it through. The, we'll make it through all this. So keep your head up high and stay strong, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you, Larry. That was awesome words of advice from Larry Hill. All right. Our next, the next speaker is the awesome Katie Nass. Take it away, Katie. And she is actually our secretary for sale. Hi, everyone. Um, I was asked to speak about um, my lived experience for the past two years uh, being someone with IDD and being legally married. Um, both my husband and I are are people with IDD and we've been married for almost two years. Um, within those two years, we've dealt with some, a lot of ups and downs. The majority um, at the beginning Um, we had difficulties with Social Security. Um, I eventually ended up losing all of my benefits. Um, and we, my parents and I hired a lawyer to fight Social Security to prove to them that both my husband and I are IDD. Um, recently, some of the good things, um, my husband, Anthony has gained a good 
paying job. Um, we moved to a larger apartment. Um, and we have now are losing our Section 8 and our food stamps. Um, and I have started a very small business making candles and wax melts for Scentsy Burners. And I sell those to family and friends. I truly believe that what the government is doing is putting a press tag on love. And with that being said, the bottom line is we need to be treated equally. Do people without IDD get treated this way? No. So why should we? Um, by getting married, both of us have gained a second family. And it's not impossible to get married and you can fight social security and it's not impossible. Good job. Thank you very much, Katie. And thank you for sharing your experience and your wonderful uh, marriage with Anthony. Um, that's, that's an issue near and dear to my heart as well at the married autistic. So a amen. And you did an amazing job expressing that. All right. Our next presenter is Blake Giz Giz Ginya. Take it away, Blake. I'm Blake Guyon. I use a speech device to communicate. Today I am going to discuss technology tools that can make life easier for people with disabilities. Speech devices can help people who have difficulty communicating. I am an Apple iPad and iPhone user. I use an application on my iPad and iPhone called Proloco for text. It allows me to communicate with people easily and quickly. It has word and sentence prediction, which allows me to communicate faster. Instead of typing out the whole word, I only need to type the first few letters. When the word I want pops up, I can select it, and the rest of the word is inputted. It predicts words ahead. I can save phrases for presentations and adjust the voice's speed and pitch. Being able to adjust the speed is important so that people can hear it clearly. It's really handy to have a communication app right on my phone. I use it to talk to my caregivers, transit drivers, and waiters at restaurants. A few years ago I went to the Washington Assistive Technology Act program, also known as WATAP. I found them to be a valuable resource. I was referred to them by the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. During my visit at WATAP, 
I discovered that the Apple Store has a large selection of assistive technology apps, and in most cases they are significantly less expensive than purchasing a dedicated device through insurance. I also learned that Apple products have many accessibility features, including on the iPad and iPhone. They include magnifying the screen, enlarging and bolding text, and the ability to have your screen be read aloud to you. If you have fine motor impairments, you can adjust the keyboard so it's not as sensitive. You can also activate a feature called assistive touch. It allows you to push buttons on a screen instead of a physical button. For example, I can adjust the volume and lock my iPad on the screen without needing to press any side buttons. This can be very useful for people with fine motor impairments. I use word prediction software on my computers. CoWriter is one program that I have used for many years. It's a word prediction software that pops up as a list of numbered words. It's in a small window on top of a document or web browser. When I see the word I want, I select the number next to the word. CoWriter will type the rest of the word for me. This speeds up my typing on emails and Word documents. I also use a program called WordQ that functions similarly to CoWriter. I use an accessibility feature on my computers called Sticky Keys. For functions that require pressing multiple keys at once, it allows me to press one key at a time. Once I press the key, it will activate that key until the action is completed. For example, I can press SHIFT, then B, and B will be capitalized. I can also activate shortcuts. For example, I can press CTRL, then P, to activate the print shortcut. Lastly, I am going to discuss tools that can help you access public transportation. Transit can give people the freedom to get around independently. I am unable to drive due to my disability. I have used the bus to get around independently for over 12 years. I live in Tacoma, and have commuted on public transportation to Seattle and Olympia many times. There are many tools that can help you become familiar with how to use public transportation. Apple Maps and Google Maps have trip planning tools to help you find what bus to catch. It will also tell you if any transfers are involved and where to get off of the bus. Many transit agencies have their own trip planners. There is also a smartphone application called One Bus Away. The app opens as a map that displays all bus stops nearby. This can be helpful for locating where you can catch the bus. It also tells you when the next bus will arrive. We all have different abilities and needs. There is a lot of technology out there that can help you be successful. If you think technology could help you become more successful, I recommend researching the issue to see if there are solutions available. Thank you. Ivanova, you're muted. Ivanova, we can't hear you. Ivanova, you need to turn off. All right. All right. Awesome. All right. Our next presenter is Josie Schindler. Take it away, Josie. And thank you, Blake. Hi, my name is Josie Schindler. I'm a parent and I'm going to be speaking on being a parent and what it's like about being a parent. And for me, it's really hard because I'm a single parent. And I have a great friend and she's on this right now. She's also a parent. And um, 
I enjoy being a parent. It's very hard for me to be a parent because I'm doing this singly by myself with no, with very little help from the father of my child, which is hard because I have to discipline my own child. And I have to, and then I have to turn around and be nice to my child. And um, that is really hard on me and it could be hard on anyone. Um, I had a dream that I would want to be a parent and that was one of my greatest goals. And I actually achieved it by being a parent. And um, it's, it, it's hard to be a parent because you have to discipline and then you have to be loving at the same time. And it's, you know, so I, uh, I don't know what else to say, but um, my child is growing up and that I will always be her parent and that if she needs me to be there for her, be there for um, her. I will be here and um, that if she needs help um, and when she gets older and she becomes an adult, I will help her. I will not leave her stranded like my parents have done um, and be a great natural support for her when she gets older. <sighs> Sorry, I'm so nervous. Um, so um, I think that is everything I have about speaking about being a parent. Um, sorry, <laughs> I did not know that I would be doing this singly. I thought that if I had a child that the other person that helped get me pregnant would be there for me but he isn't and that it's sad for me in my life and that I have to lean on my friends and my my and other people that want to be a part of me um and help me succeed at being a parent um there for me but I think I'm strong I am not going to um, let little things get in the way of achieving my 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 greatest joy and my greatest achievement of being a parent, um, and the help that I get from being a parent. So. Um, I guess that, that, that is everything I have. Thank you. Well, thank you, Josie. That was excellent. That was awesome. And, uh, another issue I relate to, uh, the uh, next presenter is Robert Waddell. Let me call you back. Yeah, it's fine. No problem. Bye. Hey, Robert. Hey, Robert. Oh, I didn't. We have a 10. Hello? Robert, you're on for your, for your presentation. My name is Robert McDowell. I used to go to Radio Tech School in 1984. Throughout my childhood life, it, it, it is um, 
It's not a good place for people with disabilities to live. Thank you. And I'm under um I'm a vice president under under I'm I'm Nova Smith in in Fish County. Um right now I would like to see the institution closed so that people with disabilities can live and work and have a good job. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you, Robert. Excellent. Thank you. We now go to Ken and Sue Larson. Take it away, Ken and Sue. Okay. Well, we're here to talk about uh, the aging and how uh, how that kind of affects your lives and how it, it, most of it is the part that we are all are going to get old eventually and we have to be you know aware aware of that and we also have to be able to uh take care of ourselves in a better way because it is a little harder uh there are a lot of different obstacles you will go through the one that you want to make sure of course when you get to an age of 65 or older you may uh go to your uh, social security and uh, make sure that you can uh, get what you have, have your, your benefits, because sometimes the benefits are, are a, little bit, uh, a little bit hard to understand and how that you can't uh, get them. That means you can try to get um, food, food stamps if you need them or um, uh, some, well, mostly doctor stuff, because I've had a little bit of a problem with that myself. COVID nineteen. As of lately, doing uh, trying to get the uh, myself lined out. And I think now that we, you know, actually myself and my uh, wife are um, on a specific uh, um, uh, prob uh, pro uh, program. Excuse me. With uh, it's called United Healthcare. So that's just an example of trying to. Uh, be able to negotiate your life in a better way so that you can make sure that you're fully taken care of. So, come on, go. So, five, two. Okay. Um, otherwise, um, the, the, was, um, okay. the ticket away to the, this, to, um, well, being old and stuff, it's it's not you know people they don't, they don't treat you like the same and everything and it's very hard mm -hmm. and money comes out of your pocket and stuff like um like they're changing my Apple Health and everything um I got told now mm -hmm. I I um my shirts are gonna be changed and I have to pay for everything and now medicine and stuff and, and that's maybe, not fair oh, oh, and, and and maybe dentists and stuff but it's hard to be old because nobody wants to pay attention to you they, they don't treat you like um too nice but but i'm in there fighting fighting away and stuff and doing my own stuff and and I'm learning a lot of stuff, but okay. so don't give up. Stay in there and, and make a good fight. Thank you. Yeah, make a good fight. <clears throat> yeah, here again. Yeah, me you say that I've been over. All right. Thanks for coming too. Now, now we will have uh, Mike Donatella. Take it away, Mike. 
Thank you, Naya Nova. I'm going to speak. Um, Mike, you're muted. You're on mute, Mike. Mike is. <clears throat> Mike, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm going to speak on COVID 19 uh, on March 22nd. Everybody with a disability should get their shot, COVID-19 shot. Uh, everybody could, should consider getting their shot because if we get sick, we could get our caregivers sick. Uh, let's see. If, yeah. We can get, because we're at risk. Number two, could be, we would need 24 seven care in our, in our personal hours for that does not, we don't have enough of those. Um, so get your shot. Um, get, get it now. Oh, make an appointment now. Make an appointment. Get it. Get on the wing of us now. Pharmacy. Oh, let me see. Pharmacy. Uh, Costco. Safeway. Are giving them. You can look on the D O H D website, the D D C website, the ARC website. You need to bring your picture ID and your appointment, your, your, uh, your appointment uh, time. We are at risk if you don't get your shot. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Mike. And yeah, let's get those vaccines. Oh, hey, um, Our next I'm presenter is Anthony Ness. Take it away, Anthony. Hi, hi my name is Anthony Nash, and I am a self advocate who has been working on the sub minimum wage bill with Ivanova and a few others. And I've also been working on it on the federal level with Congress. And we deserve to be paid regular wage. We do not deserve to be treated like children getting paid pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters an hour. We deserve to be paid fair wage. We deserve to use that to live independently. And having a job helps with many things. It helps with your relationships, your living expenses. It helps with everything you need. And it's also something for people to do too. And you also get respect. And that is what we all deserve. We all deserve respect and dignity like everybody else. And that, that's why I'm happy I have my job and working with all these great self-advocates and all the boards I serve on too. Thank you. So thank you, Anthony.
Wonderful presentation. All right. Our next presenter is Belle Fail. Take it away, Belle. Good morning from the art studio of Bill. Sorry I can't be with you this morning. As many of you know, I have been a self-advocate for 30 years. I work with people first from Washington as a training developer and a community advocate. My job is to make sure that I speak on behalf of individuals like yourself and speak with the legislators. I have the unique opportunity to I have the unique opportunity to share my talents and gifts with the whole community. Through my drawings and my advocacy efforts, I can send clear messages to my legislators and people that support me. Like this, like this art piece of art says, it says positive actions can cause a great reaction if we do it together. Down here it says, let's advocate, speak up and share. Well, I wanna share a message with you today. A message that we all have used in our advocacy efforts. Nothing about us without us which is a clear message that we need to send to our legislators. Whether you use a communication device, a piece of paper, or a pen, a telephone, a computer, it's okay that we all communicate in different ways. We just need to send a message. So I wanna encourage each of you to find your gift on how to communicate and send out everybody, whether it's somebody that gives you support, whether it's a funding resource that you may need, or whether it's a, a, a legislator or even a government official, I want you to send a clear message that I'm here and I count because there is nothing about us without us. So, pick up a piece of paper, don't be afraid of it, draw or write a message, pick up a phone or a communication device, or even ask a friend or two to help you. We all need to share in the same message that we're here and we count. We may need support but we are people first. So with that said, I'm glad that you are advocating for each and every one of us and yourselves. So please join in our journey and ask. Use your gifts and your talents. Reach deep inside and grab it and show the world that you have it. from the art studio of Bill and my two cats and my wife, Karina. Go and have a great advocacy moment. It's yours to take. Bye-bye. Awesome, Bill, and that artwork is beautiful. It's awesome, thank you. Our next presenter is Jessica Renner. I, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, Pat K. K, K Lee, sorry. Good morning, everyone. Um, so, hello, my name's K Lee. I'm a self-advocate. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Hello? We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, loud and clear. Thank you. 
So hello, my name is Keely. I'm a com I am a self-advocate. I am also a community engagement assistant at Open Doors for Multicultural Families. I am also a daughter of an immigrant from Vietnam, Southeast Asia. Today, I want to talk to you about the language access and the barriers that still affects students and parents in our school today. Immigrant and refugees hope always always had to depend on interpreters or translator to communicate with their children, teachers, and school system. This is this is e even more important with those families that have two child with developmental or intellectual disabilities. When I was in high school, my families and I fully rely on interpreters, translator to tell us what the teachers were saying. If the interpreter did not do a good job, the school and my family would, would not know. It has been it's has been a decade since my family struggled with having support from qualified interpreters and translator services. 10 years later, families are still struggling with having this, these same barrier and gaps in their language support, in their language support. Families have the right, families have the right to access to language access services that with federal and state law requires. Removing language access barriers will make it possible for parents to know what is happening to their children or what's the next step for their children education progress. I ask everyone here to remember that teachers always ask for help from their from the parents. Here can how can your our cultural parent, multicultural parents help the teachers if they can't communicate effectively? How can parents share what they think is best for their child if they don't receive qualified interpreters or their child IEP not translated? I don't think it's too much to ask. As one of our parents at ODMF said recently, I just want to be involved with my child education. If we truly want family engagement, we must have language access reform so that, so this is not happening 10 years from now. Thank you all for allowing me to speak and share my story. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And that's really important that we have um, people that can translate and support families and translating. So thank you for sharing that, uh, a really important issue. All right. And now, now it is time to hear about Bells of Interest with Jessica Renner. Take it away, Jessica, our awesome admin. My name is Jessica Renner. I am the administrator for self-advocates and leadership sale. I am going to go over the bills of interest for you. I am not going to go over every bill, but we'll especially talk about the ones that have an impact on the IT community. SB 5083 is the capital budget bill. Self-advocates are adamantly against the current language. The budget bill provides $120 million for a huge new nursing facility for only 107 people. We do not need a new institution for people with DD in our state, although the budget bill provides $120 million for a new institution. There is no money in the Housing Trust Fund Developmental Disabilities Set, aside for housing for people in the community. Only 1% of people with DD live in the state institutions. The other 99% live in the community, most of them with their family, because there is not enough affordable 
Accessible housing now, I want to touch on in gross substitute Senate Bill 5284. This bill will end subminimum wage certificates in Washington state. Those certificates allow employers to pay people with disabilities less than minimum wage, as little as two cents an hour. There are only 12 employers who still use this certificate to pay people with disabilities less than everyone else. The federal government is working on this issue and will mandate state to phase out these certificates in the next two years. Self-advocates are super excited about this bill. It had a public hearing on Friday in House Committee on Labor and Workplace Standards, and it was scheduled for executive session today at 10 a.m. So it should be continuing through the process. The next bill I want to talk about is Senate Bill 5268 which is a bill that transforms services for individuals with IDD by increasing the capabilities of community residential services and redesigning the long-term nature of intermediate care facilities or ICFs. This bill also touches on caseload forecasting and lowering client ratios for case managers. Self-advocates are not happy that the bill will still allow the use of ICFs for crisis stabilization short-term only, but recognize this bill needs to pass in order to increase community crisis stabilization. Senator Braun worked with us to amend the bill so that ICFs are the last resort and that residential providers request a 90-day bed hold so the person does not lose their home while being stabilized. It was scheduled for public hearing in the House Committee on Housing human services and veterans yesterday and now needs to get scheduled for executive session last. I want to talk about House Bill 1227. This bill is about protecting the rights of families responding to allegations of abuse and neglect of a child. It specifically says that CPS cannot take a child away from their parent. Just because the parent has a disability, this has happened too often when the baby is born. A doctor or nurse can call CPS just because the parent has a disability and it is assumed the parent can't take care of the baby it had a public. Hearing in the Senate Committee on Human Services, Reentry and Rehabilitation last Friday, if there are not questions, I will hand it over to Alex to wrap up this advocacy day. After attending this briefing, you have many options to advocate to your legislators. You can. Thank you, Tron. After attending this briefing, you have many options to advocate to your legislators. You can. Schedule a Zoom with your legislators. Testify at a hearing. Email your legislators about bills that are important to them.
Watch each advocacy day afterwards on our website. Email to get virtual appointments with your legislators. You can watch hearings on TVW. You can sign in to testify at future hearings. You can sign in pro, con or other, or submit written testimony on a bill. And be sure to join us for future advocacy days. We need to make sure you are satisfied with advocacy day. Be sure to fill out our feedback form. Let's walk through it together. Advocacy Day is a project of the ARC of Washington State and funded by the Developmental Disabilities Council. Your feedback helps us to continue improving and helping your voice to be heard. Start by putting in your email address. Next, you select the Advocacy Day you are giving input for. Today is March 17th, nothing about us, about us. Then you respond if this is your first Advocacy Day or not. Next, you pick the smileys that answer how you feel about the virtual advocacy day. Then you submit the form. Just as easy as that. Your input helps Diana and the ARC to know what you like, what you don't like, what is helpful, what is not helpful. You can learn all about these and more ideas to get involved on our website at www.arcwa.org and click on Advocacy Days. You can also contact us at sale at arcwa.org or diana at arcwa.org if you need help. The what? Are there any questions? The, the, the what? I'm going to close your door so I can run the Oh, back. go ahead. I have a question, Evanova. Go for it. So where, I know that this meeting is recorded, but where can we find the, uh, the recorded video? Where can we find it? So uh, all of the recordings will be on the Ark of Washington website. Uh, it will be posted on the, where will you find, usually find the advocacy day registrations. It will be right up below that. It will be on their website. And uh, Sean just posted the website on, in the chat. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions or comments? Oh, Josie has her okay. hand up. Go for it, Josie. I have a, I have a question. Who will be able to see the videos and um, will they have questions on the videos of, for the speakers who spoke today? And how can we answer the questions? Uh, I don't know if there will be comments in the video. I, um, there may be a... Uh, on Uncle Washington's person, uh, it's the one who administrates that. Uh, so maybe they would email you. Um, and maybe you could actually, uh, if, uh, if people that were not here today, uh, you know, if you want to put your email in the chat to uh, just let you people know what your email is so that they can ask you directly if you want that. Ivanova, this is Diana. And after the advocacy day has been has happened, we then email all the people who registered and send them the link to the video as well as a link to the feedback form. Thank you for the information, Diana. That's great. Thank you, Diana. You're welcome. But this is the There is a Spanish question in the chat. Okay. Would you like to read that? Yeah. yeah. Because so um, I also have a question. Um, do something with advocacy and uh, time for mothers with special children or
Philippe fam there's a family advocacy day that does that. Uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was a, like a month ago. There was a family advocacy day that focuses on uh, parents, oh, Uncle Tom. families and parents. And that, that advocacy day was recorded and the video is posted on the, the ARC's website, um, but it does not have the Spanish interpretation on the recorded video. Alex has more he wants to say, so I'm going to let Alex uh, uh, take it from here. Go for it, Alex. I want to take you through the steps of signing in Pro for HB 1061. First, type into your browser leg.wa.gov. After the legislative homepage loads, look for Let Your Voice Be Heard, then click on Participating in the Process. Then, under Participating in a Committee Hearing, click on Committee Sign In Remote Testimony. Then, because this bill is being heard in the Senate Human Services, Reentry and Rehabilitation Committee, click on Senate. Select the committee dropdown for Human Services, Reentry and Rehabilitation Committee, then click on the meetings dropdown and select March 18, 21, 1 30 p.m., then select second SHB 1061 Child Welfare and Developmental Disability, then select type of testimony, select I would like my position noted for the record. Then select position from the drop down. Pro next, fill out your first name, last name, email address, organization, if you want it listed, your address, city, state, zip code, and phone number. Then you have to admit that you are not a robot by clicking in the box. Lastly, select submit your registration. As advocates, we can do this long process. Give it a try. Sale members should do this to show our unified support. Thank you, Alex. That's really important information on how to testify. And it was uh, really good that you said that. So thank you. Uh, does anybody else have any questions or uh, let's look at the chat here. Um, that, uh, the pastor says, so is there a link for the Washington State uh, link for, was, was just shown? Uh, so uh, the link is the, to the Washington.gov. Uh, 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 and Sean just posted the video for Family Advocacy Day that's up on YouTube. Oh, yes, yeah, so the videos are also up on YouTube as well, not just on the uh, Washington website. It's also up on YouTube. Um, oh, so Sharon, what you need to do is press on the little globe at the top, uh, bottom of your tool screen and click on the, your preferred language. Uh, yes. And Anthony just shared the link to the website for uh, uh, registering for public testimony. So uh, Ivan Nova? Yeah? When you say yes, that means you we have the permission to share those videos with the um, yes. people so within they, our they, organization. Yes, you, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay, 
So I'll I'll wait until uh, we got the because I don't see it on the website yet. Yeah, it, it will be on after we posted it. Thank you. Yeah, the videos are mainly public anyway. It's just like our meeting here. <laughs> yep. Public knowledge. That is that. Uh, um, and, uh, Sebastian, the uh, website is right there, uh, the leds.wall.gov. Yeah, but Anthony. how do I get to where Alex was? Uh, you click on uh, be part of the process for committee hearings. Um, and Sean posted a video of how uh, uh, explaining it more if you need to rewatch, if you need to watch that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and Diane Staden posted the app to us uh, remote testimony. I do have Thanks. one more thing that I wanted to bring up here in the okay. meeting. Okay. Um, because I know everybody does use the buses. I'm pretty sure if I stand corrected in the meet or in this meeting. How many of you guys use transit here in Washington? Public transit? You mean public transit like a uh, metro bus? Yes. Anybody? Yes, I do. Yeah, I, do. We, I do. I use it. I do. I do. Quite a bit, right? I do too. Oh, all the time. I, I use it all the time. information so we could put... I know Olympia does not have the Orca system. How many of your guys' bus systems besides Seattle and Pierce County and Snohomish County does not have the Orca system? I think it should have, um, when you go past the zone, all you have to pay is just an extra uh, quarter or something. That's the only thing. Right. To We're trying to get the Orca system for the systems that do not have the Orca system. Snohomish County has it. I know Snohomish County has it. So we have some people who have their hands up. Uh, Tracy and then Eric Mathis, I see, have their hands up. Mm -hmm. So we want to get a bill to the legislator to help the counties so we can get the ORCA system for the counties that do not have the ORCA system because the bus systems in those counties do not have the ORCA system like Inner City Transit, Mason Transit, Grays yeah. Harbor. Those systems do not have the ORCA system. We need to get them the ORCA. Yeah, I, I, I see. What's so serious. important about the ORCA system anyway? Well, the ORCA um, system is used on like the ferries, the buses, the sounder train. Um, it's more accessible. It is very accessible. Um, can I share my screen? It, it, it makes it so that you can pay using these cards. And Thank it you. Makes it easier to do yeah, and those yeah. you don't need. You not necessarily need the monthly pass. You can use that one under e purse, which is you put in certain yeah, money they have one in there. E you put them in there. You don't have to worry about your out money unless they're running low. Because like on monthly pass, they give you, you only can take out certain money out that card. And when you get on sound transit, will give you challenging. But if you use e purse inside that card. You can spend yeah. as much and as they can where you go. How much is in your e purse? Yeah, how, how much level? Uh huh. How okay, much so level? Out of respect of the other people who have had their hands raised, uh, Tracy and then Eric Mathers, you can uh, ask your question. Um. So I just wanted to let you guys know that you guys are wonderful. And um, yesterday, I got my uh, okay. 
Okay. Thank, thank you, Joe. Tracy. Thank you. So, uh, I what I was saying, I have some uh, information uh, on my computer here. I wanted to. <laughs> there's other people who have questions, and I want to. So, can you hold that thought? Uh, Eric, you had a question? Yes. Hi. Uh, my question is for Josie uh, Schindler, and I am wondering if you could tell us what are maybe one or two challenges of being a parent, and also what are a couple of positive things that you enjoy in having a kid and being a parent? <laughs> Rosie, do you want to answer that? Um, my, I guess to answer your question, Eric, is I have to discipline my child, which is very sad for me because she has to know what is right and what is wrong. And when she does something that involves a punishment, um, that is um, one of the challenges that I have with with being a parent because it's hard um, to to teach her that hitting, kicking, saying bad words is wrong. But I know in in the long run, punishing her will do some good because she will learn not to do those things. And one of my one of my joy of being a parent is watching her grow up, watching her do something that I did not do or I did not get to do when I was her age or her um, uh, being able to grow into other clothes are one of the greatest joys that I was like, oh, hey, this fits you now. You grew up into this. And um, having her play and watching her play and getting along with others is another one of my greatest joys of watching her and being able to be there for her um, is one of my other greatest joys of being a, a parent. And it, it it's... It, it's good, you know, and, um, but it's hard in, in the same run, in the same long run and, and stuff like that. So um, it was hard giving birth to her. It was hard because I, I do not, I am a tough cookie when it comes to pain. Um, I was running across the street in downtown Seattle trying to get to my job on time and I and I was beating the light so it was about to turn the the light was about to turn green and the you know that stop the hand up there was ticking and I was beating the light in downtown Seattle well on the other side of the on the other side of the pavement there were these yellow things and I did not see them and I tripped on them and I fell and I busted my lip and I was kind of bleeding but I wasn't you know I was a little sore and my my boss looked at me and said now Josie I see you got a flat lip and I go yeah I, I was uh running across the street so I could get here and he goes are you in any pain and I said no and so pain for me is not a big deal. I um, I have a high tolerance for pain and they say that giving birth to a child is the worst pain you can go through. Well, for me, I did that with no drugs, no nothing, completely all natural, but with both of my children because my first child came so quickly that I was like, well, with my second child, I'm not gonna do that. 
Well, she came so slow. I was in the hospital for like over 20 hours giving birth in so much pain. I was like, hey, I can do this. And the doctors were like, come on, Josie, do you want any pain medicine? I was like, no, 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 don't give it to me. I can do it. And I just, I just put her out like no, nothing. Thank you, Josie. That's very good answer. Thank you. I don't want, I don't want to you. go into much detail Thanks. of giving birth or anything, but. That's okay. I understand. Right. Thank, thank you for yeah. sharing, Jody. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, okay, so we have Kyle and Sharon. Actually, yeah. Robert and Mike have had their hands physically up before they put theirs up. Okay, so my okay, Mike, Robert, then Sharon and Kyle. Uh, unmute yourself, Mike. Okay. You're still muted, Mike. Hit the blue button in the middle of your screen. There. Hi, everybody. This is Mike Raymond. I'm enjoying it. I am sitting here watching you guys. What are you doing? Alexander, what are you doing? And you guys are doing a very good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Albany. All right, thank, thank, thank you, Mike. Robert, you had a question? Alexander, Robert, you had a question? It's, it's your turn now, Robert. Uh, my question is, um, I think I can do better on my testimony. I think I can do a lot better. My question is, if I did speak again, I want to make sure I'm concentrated a little bit more. Thank you. Can I say something about my hand being raised? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, let Sharon and Kyle go next, and then you can go after Kyle, Josie. Okay. I just have okay, a Sharon. comment. So uh, I'm legally deaf without my hearing aid, and I have a really hard time when there's crosstalk, like when you're answering a question for me. I, even though the words on the screen, the words on the screen become jumbled when there's two people talking. So if I could have one person talk to me so that I can understand what they're saying, I, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Uh, Kyle, you're next. Thank you there, Ivanova. Uh, just a quick comment regarding the bus system. Right now, as you all know, the Orca system is regarding around the Puget Sound area, which is Pierce, the Homish, and King Counties, including also the our ferry system. The, uh, the other systems, I know for a fact that um, with like Thurston County, they are wanting to put it in place, but as you all know, it's in all the counters, it says it's around money. And and also the technology and the system that has to, to be able to do it. So right now, I, um, as far as I know, the um, each individual county may have their own system, but it's nice to have the, the uh, it, into one system enough to, so that it we can charge, I say, 25 cents to a card or whatever for the disabled, for a person with a disability rate to be able to get on their system. But in the meantime, right now, each county, when they're doing for their transportation system, has when they have their own system, they just, they say they, they prefer to put it in the bus system and safety measures instead of trying to build out technology to accept outside car, um, cards as far as their Puget Sound has, because it's, it's centered around the Puget Sound area, which is right now it's just hits that, I mean, from Sohomish to Pierce County and the ferry systems. And sound transit and all that good stuff and the, the trains. So that, that's uh, that's as far as the scope of right from, from what I know. Thanks. 
Thank you uh, for that information, Kyle. Okay, now Jody, you can uh, now it's your turn. Um, I would like to say if anybody remembers these cards. These are from a long time ago, and we don't want all the buses you could take with them. If I have it upside down, sorry about that. But they were from a long time ago, and I kept a lot of them, even though that they're not active anymore. Um, but I think that if you do not have Orca, or an orca system on your bus that um, maybe they're they are trying to get that system logged on to your on to your uh, bus company or maybe the bus company does not want the orca system on their buses like um, Olympia or the the buses to Olympia don't want it and they just want it to be free for everyone. I know that um, the Olympia buses drivers are very nice and that they have been they've been having their board meetings and having um, saying that they want to keep their system to where it's free because a lot of people I have noticed, say, well, I can't take the bus. Do you have 25 cents? You know, or to help me get onto the bus. Do you have a dollar? And they don't want people doing that. And I, I actually think that the buses should be free for anyone to just get on and ride them. But because um, I kind of remember back when I was like 13, the buses were like 93 cents. So like, um, you know, I just think that they need to be more, more um, cheaper and less so that people don't, don't, aren't pot handling or cash handling saying, hey, do you mm -hmm. have a dollar? Do you have this, yeah. do you have that to get onto the bus? And if they're if they're free, they people won't be doing that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Josie, for that information. Okay, so we're gonna end it here. We're gonna end the recording. But if people want to stay on to uh, hang out, you're more than welcome to. But we're gonna officially end the official advocacy day. Thank you all for coming and uh, asking these wonderful questions and participating. This has been a really awesome self-advocacy day. Thank you. So thank you all. And so if you want to leave, you can leave and uh, we're going to end the recording now. Thank you, Nayanova. Thank you, Ivanova.